Here's a question for you. How much do sharks eat? This is so much scarier with a blindfold on. <laughs> Study of Sharks, part four. Studying shark metabolism. Tell me if the sharks are coming by. Or don't tell me, maybe that's better. I don't know. And obviously, <laughs> it's really easy if you're in a shark tank, figure out how much food the sharks are eating because you can keep track of how much food you have in your hand and you throw it into the tank. The point we're trying to get across is that when we study sharks in the wild, we see them for a couple of minutes when we have them alongside the boat and we're tagging them and then we release them. And what happens after that, we're completely clueless about it. We have no idea. That's what this symbolizes is that we have no idea what sharks do in the wild. You can think of it as blind science, but it's almost always how scientists have to study wild sharks. And to kind of get to my question, how much do sharks eat? You first have to understand shark metabolism, or essentially how much energy do they use? For decades now, people have been trying to figure out how much energy animals use in the wild. Not just sharks, but any animal. It's a really tricky thing to figure out. Figure out how much energy they're expending, uh, you need some way to track their actual movement. If they're a shark, most of their energy they expend is going to come from their swimming behavior. A lot of sharks swim constantly from the moment they're born till the moment they die. And so that's where our special tags come into play that are called accelerometers. They actually use the same technology that's found in the iPhone or your Fitbit. Just like the Fitbit is tracking how many steps you take, our tags track how many tail beats a shark is making and also how strong those tail beats are. So the idea is if we know that information for a shark in the wild, we can calculate how much energy they're expending, how many calories they're burning when they're in the wild. In order to do that, we first have to have some laboratory experiments where we calibrate how much oxygen consumption is used per tail beat. To do these experiments in the laboratory, what we'll do is we'll take an accelerometer tag, we'll put it on the shark, have it swim in a swim tunnel or like a shark treadmill. And as you can see, the shark just swims and stays in one place. And we can adjust the speed of that propeller to make the water go slower or faster and control how fast the shark swims. In the meantime, this accelerometer tag we just put on the fin is recording every tail beat, both the tail beat frequency and amplitude, so we know how strong it's beating the tail. Because it's sealed off, we're also measuring how much oxygen the animal is consuming, and we can correlate exactly how much oxygen is used at different swimming speeds. Then we can take data from wild sharks that only had a tag on their fin, and we can back calculate how much oxygen they were consuming while they're in the wild. We call that field metabolic rate, which is the holy grail of shark behavioral ecology. Now let me put this all in perspective for you. When a shark eats a fish, that fish is now energy. It can be used for two things, the energy to swim and support its own metabolism, and as a way to get bigger. Now, animals create energy to swim via cellular respiration. It's a process that uses oxygen. Now, Nick has found a way to figure out how oxygen relates to their swimming. Essentially, he's figuring out how much energy sharks devote to this process at different swimming speeds. So if you know how fast they're swimming, which you do when you have a tag on the shark, then you know how much energy they're using. As scientists, we often talk about how sharks are really important for the ecosystem because they're apex predators. But it's really hard to tell what the actual impact of a species is on the ecosystem unless you know its metabolic rate, how much energy it's expending in the wild. Uh, so animals that have a high metabolic rate or are expending a lot of energy are gonna have to consume a lot and take in a lot of calories, and they're gonna have a greater impact on their environment than, say, a species that doesn't need to eat as often or consumes very little calories. So Nick's research here is answering a really important question. It's the first step in answering how important sharks are in the ecosystem. So if we can figure out how much oxygen these animals are actually using in the wild, we can get an idea of how much, how many calories they're burning, how much food they need to eat to replace those calories, and that can tell us what this animal's impact is on its environment. Now my original question was, how much do sharks eat? Well Nick informed me that it's not exactly what he found but you could do it. We can theoretically come up with a calculation of how many fish they need to eat on a daily basis. Basically, you'd need to know two things. You'd have to know this field metabolic rate that he's getting to, and you'd have to figure out how much they grew. And that just means that you'd have to weigh them at two separate times. Of course, that's not as easy as it sounds, but that's how you'd figure out how much sharks eat. Oh, and you see the sharks? Yeah. Oh, they're right. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. That's a bull. Yeah, that's a bull. That's a bull shark. That's a bull shark. Yay. 
Hey, thanks for watching everybody. This is the final video in a four part series that I did with Nick all about the shark research that he's doing. Now I'm putting the links to the other videos right here and in the description below. If you like sharks, then I think you're gonna like this entire series. It's basically stuff you're not gonna hear on Shark Week, but it's what real shark biologists like Nick are doing both in the laboratory and in the field. Working with the film crew is great. Rob and Jonas are awesome. They bring so many toys out on the boat with us and uh, lots of batteries too, nothing ever dies. Um, <laughs> and, and they never make us repeat answers to questions or anything. They always just they ask you a question one time and that's it, it's done. So uh, it's, it's fantastic. 